DJI have launched 1.5.8 of their Fly app and I've been out flying the DJI Mini 2 and the DJI Air 2S and I have also indeed been bench testing the DJI Mavic Mini and in this video I'm going to bring you a full review of the app including a flight test and I'm going to tell you everything, the good, the bad and the ugly, so let's get into it. When you first open up the DJI Fly app, you are going to be greeted with this screen, which is showing you there is an update available. So let's take a quick look at what is actually new then. So we have Master Shots, Hyperlapse and Focus Track are now available on the DJI Mavic 3, subject to the latest firmware. We also have added support to shoot in RAW format, again only available on the DJI Mavic 3. Added support to adjust the EXP settings, which that's an odd one because we actually had that on the last DJI Fly app update. Um, so I'm not sure why they've mentioned it again, but anyway, we also have fixes certain issues and optimizes overall app quality. Now on the face of it, it looks like that is a huge update for the DJI Mavic 3. There has also been a huge firmware update for that drone as well, potentially making that drone into the item it basically should have been at launch. So to give a quick disclaimer, the device I have been using in this video for my testing is an Android one. I have not tested the iOS device and of course I am running on Android version 11 so far. Now your experiences may differ from mine but of course I have tried this in multiple locations today which is why it's so late getting my video out. I've also tried a couple of different devices as well to be sure of the results. Okay, so just bear in mind that these are my personal experiences and yours may differ. Now that's all clear, let's get on to showing you exactly what is new and the flight tests. So when we first open this up, the first thing that you may have noticed is there is a couple of new little graphics or redesigned labels on the DJI Fly app screen. So if we look at the top, they've added the lettering RC next to signal strength and the satellite icon looks ever so slightly different as well. I have also had a good look uh, at the compass. That seems to be absolutely fine. And of course, the map seems to be absolutely normal as well. If we look down at the bottom, this is where it becomes slightly interesting because at first glance, it looks completely normal for automatic mode. You can see where we can select the resolution and of course, we can select the EV compensation as well as you normally could. However, there is a cool little menu I want to show you. If we click into Pro Mode, this opens up a usual screen that we see with the values down at the bottom. But if you go ahead and click one of those, it is going to open up a brand new menu. What you are going to be able to see is two tabs down at the bottom. And if we flick to the first one, you will see this is where we can select the resolutions or where we can select our auto white balance or, of course, set it manually, whichever you prefer. If we go into the right hand tab, you have now got full control again, but a slightly different menu of your ISO, your shutter speed, for example, as well. Now, to show the menu on the DJI Air 2S, this is ever slightly different because of course, for first off, we have got the option to select D-Log and HLG in there as well. We have also got some additional features on the other side uh, where for some bizarre reason, they have given us the option to select auto against the ISO and shutter speed. I'm not entirely sure why you'd want to do that because I would sh pretty much be sure that if you are getting into your pro settings you're going to want to set them manually and not have them change that's kind of the whole point but of course if you can think of a reason as to why you might want to have those in auto on the air 2s please do let me know in the comment section below having looked at those new menus which to be perfectly honest i quite like if we go into the other menu then by clicking the three dots at the top right corner um, i've had a really good flick through with this menu and i can really say that nothing has really changed the only one thing i can see is where we used to have the auto return to home altitude the distance and the height limitations all next to each other that has been slightly jiggled about you can now see the option to update the home point is set right at the top just below the auto um, return to home altitude. Now, if we look again at the Air 2S, going back through all the menus, you know, just 
to really wrap this up quickly, there is absolutely nothing new that I can see. All of the menus look exactly the same, apart from that one change that you've already seen. Now, an issue there has been exclusively for DJI Mini 2 owners is the problem when it comes to actually resetting the aircraft's yaw rotation speed. If we go into the advanced gimbal settings and scroll down to the bottom, now, for some time now, this has actually been missing or not working correctly. And unfortunately, I have to report that as you can see on screen, I'm moving these down and I'm hitting that reset button it is actually still an issue so that isn't actually fixed let's get on to the bad bits then so when I was trying to bring you this video and when I was trying to basically create this video I had a bit of an issue now if you look at my screen uh, you can see that there are certain values changing and I'm going through the menus but when I actually try to tilt the gimbal up or down you can see the little gimbal indicator on the right hand side is moving but what isn't moving or what isn't altering my screen. This is the first time in a long time that I've had any issues with the DJI Flight app. There was a problem back in the summer uh, where people were suffering from black screens um, or the general screen freezing, which of course is no good whatsoever, but of course does put a huge emphasis on visual line of sight. But anyway, you know, this happened a lot and almost every time I was flicking for the menus and trying to show adjustments on screen uh, it, nothing was actually happening I just kept having to constantly either back out um, and come back into the screen again and then generally it would never really refresh I would just either get the same screen I already had or I would just revert to a black screen really guys that's not good at all to the point where I had to constantly keep just closing the app as you can see on screen and then reopening it just to get my live feed honestly it took me about 20 minutes just to get through that little section that I've just shown you because nothing was actually happening on screen and it was at this moment where I thought right do I just cut cut this short and just call it a bad job but no I decided to still put the drone up in the air um, and just complete the test and make sure that all the return to home altitudes were working and return to home tests were working and the signal strength was okay and the reason why I still wanted to do that is because of course this could have been an isolated incident to myself so once I go to actually spin the props up and take off, once again, the screen the home freezes on has me. Been updated. Once again, Please that's check really it on not the map. good. And this was with the DJI Mini 2. So this kept happening, and of course, I went out for a flight. Um, after resetting the DJI Fly app, it seemed to be okay, if I'm perfectly honest. I went out, I wanted to test one of the main safety features, such as the return to home, and this is smart return to home, because of course, I've still got reasonable battery, um, and that did perform absolutely fine. I've got no grumbles with that. I then took the drone back out, and I had a little bit of a problem um, where... Given the fact that I already had a bit of a worry, given the fact that my screen kept freezing, there was absolutely nowhere I could encounter any interference whatsoever because, of course, I'm flying out in the open and I got incredible amounts of screen lag and jumping. And basically, from that moment on, I didn't actually trust it. Now, one thing that is quite interesting that I've only noticed since I got back and reviewed the footage, I'm going to try and play this in real time. And I think this is an absolutely ugly um, issue and one that has to be really taken care of. So picture this, I'm flying along the bank to the Humber. It's not any particularly more windy than what it usually is. I consider myself a competent pilot and of course, I have visual line of sight of my drone at all times. I've got around 27% battery left. Plenty of green left because I'm only 150 or so meters away, not that far at all, uh, not particularly any wind warnings, so no problem getting back home. However, looking back at the footage, you quickly see that an error message pops up on screen and then suddenly disappears. If you was looking up at the drone um, or you was just looking around at your surroundings or as you're flying, of course, you could quite easily miss that. It was on screen for literally a couple of seconds. So let's just wind back and let's just take a look at what that actual message was, because this is quite alarming. So if we freeze that on screen, battery power restricted, aircraft performance decreased to ensure flight safety, return to home promptly. Now guys, that is quite a serious one. So then what this message seems to be telling us is the drone has decided all by itself that it's going to decrease its performance. Now, as far as I'm concerned, I'm not that far away. I've got plenty of battery left, sure 27 
percent isn't loads but we're well in the green and of course we're not exactly at 20 percent we're nearly at 30 percent we're not at 10 percent and for some reason this flashes up so fast you can easily miss it now if you are out in the open and bearing in mind i have to say this is the first time i've ever seen this message if you are out and you are flying in potentially windy conditions um and for some reason this drone decides that it's just going to reduce its own performance for whatever reason it has um that and you've missed that warning because you're looking elsewhere or you're looking up at your drone and it's only flashed up so fast guys that's a potential banana skin isn't it um, i'm really really quite concerned about that so to move on with the dji air 2s once again as i spun up the props and clicked to confirm that i was happy to take off and i checked the props the screen froze on me yet again um, so of course the drone was just above me uh, so obviously i had it in line of sight at all times so i simply closed down the app and opened it up again and from then it seemed to be perfectly fine i flew out i did a few tests i did a return to home test which of course went absolutely perfectly as it usually does which of course you know if your app starts to freeze or your 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 screen is freezing that might be quite well a, a much needed safety feature but one strange thing what was happening is even though i had my drone in a gimbal follow mode uh, once i clicked the obstacle avoidance and it turned off the uh, sideways flight for some bizarre reason it decided to put it back into fpv mode it could be that i've just missed it previously but i've never known it do that before just kept putting itself in fpv mode um but yeah i could be wrong but please do let me know your thoughts in the comment section below so just to quickly mention the dji mavic mini and mini se of course those two drones are effectively the same drone uh with some couple of little advertised changes and on the bench that had the same issues um as what the other two drones did if you have already installed it and you're not quite got the confidence after what i've just told you in this video uh, there is a link in the video description to my own personal google drive just down there and i host all of the old android apks uh, so if you ever want to go back to an older older version of the app you can of course do so using that this is on my own personal experience but i'm diligent enough and i've tested this on multiple devices and i actually went to a different location just to roll anything out and i got very similar results as well so guys not one that i can recommend uh, but wanted to put you in the picture if you have had good experiences fantastic if you have had any negative experiences you know i'm with you but please do let me know either way what your findings are in the comment section below i want to hear from you but anyway that wraps up the video of course please do check out my other videos i'm sure there's something on my channel you will enjoy watching and until next time see you again soon